in your mathematics courses, the elements of the sets you encounter are numbers or vectors, not just any objects. You may have encountered some of them already in secondary education. In this video, we will view or review some of these sets. Furthermore, we will extend this to sets of factors and, at the end of this video, you will see a nasty pitfall concerning sets and factors, so let us have a look. Let's start with sets of numbers. Let's start with the set n of natural numbers. That's why it has the n, which consists of the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. When you start to count, you use the natural numbers. N. And again, you see the brackets over here to indicate that we have a set. I see the dots because we cannot write down all numbers because this goes on 3, 4, 5 infinitely far, so we use the dots to indicate that. Set of natural numbers. Then you learn how to add them, 2 plus 3, you learn to subtract, 5 minus 3. And at a certain point you tried 3 minus 5 and that was a problem. So then you learned to set Z, which also contained the negative numbers. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc. And the Z that comes from German means Zahlen, which is numbers in German. Then you went on on primary education and you learned to divide. So you learned 6 divided by 3 equals 2. 8 divided by 2 equals 4, etc. But at a certain point you wanted to try 5 divided by 3. Well, it doesn't work out, so we learned the fractions. Q, the next set, which also contains 1 over 2 and 12 over 5, that kind of numbers. Um, and Q is coming from the word quotient. And then you went on, probably to uh, secondary education, to high school. Uh, because you can compute quite a lot with up till the set Q. And then at a certain point you try to solve x squared equals 4. Well, it yields 2 and minus 2, that's fine. But uh, then you say, well, what happens if I try to solve x squared equals 2? Then you need the square root of 2, which is not a fraction. So you need a new set, R, the real numbers, which contains, for example, square root of 2, and pi. Uh, it's also a real number and not a fraction. And then you are at set R. Of course, you want to represent this graphically. You can start with the line of numbers, with natural numbers, 0, 1, 2, etc. Then you go on. You can extend it if you include minus 1, minus 2, because there's still room on the left over here. So you can make the set of the Zahlen set, the second number line. Then you continue, because you see there's room in between the 0 and the 1 to place the 1 half. So on the line there's still room for the 1 half, etc. So you can put all quotients on the line as well. Then you go on with R, and you can add the square root of 2 and all the numbers of R on the line. At that point the line is completely full. Then we are done with the line of numbers. Now we want to go on and in the algebra, and we want to go to even larger sets, but then we have to go to 2D or 3D. For example, we can make sets of vectors. We make one copy of R and another copy of R, and then we can make sets of points with two numbers, say point P, X1, X2. Or we make three copies of R, one, two, three, and then we have points which consist of three real numbers, point P, X1, X2, X3. And we can go on like this. Well, we cannot draw it anymore. Drawing a three-dimensional picture on a two-dimensional blackboard is already quite challenging. But if we want to go on, we can make factors with n components. The factor has n components. That means that x is a factor consisting of n numbers. We cannot draw it anymore, but we can make computations with that. And now the nasty pitfall. What we often do is that we use interchangeably the point P with co coordinates x1 and x2 and the vector from the origin to the point P. 
respect to which components x1, x2. So even th though they are kind of different objects, point and a vector from the origin pointing to the point, we often uh, use them interchangeably and it has to be clear from the context what we actually mean. So be careful with that. We often identify the point P and the vector to the point.